program. Um, Trina, let's talk first about the racial abuse that the Lion King cast at, at Borgosh Theatre were subjected to as they made their way home from performances this week. Many people may have been shocked at what happened to them, but experience and research shows that sadly this is not uncommon. No, it's not uncommon. These kind of um, what, what we call microaggressions that people are faced with every day um, are, are something that very often aren't reported because they're just something that people have to deal with. I think because this is high profile, people are hearing about it. But if you talk to anybody from the BAM community or even people with a disability, any of these communities will tell you that they face um, um, violence on the street, they face aggressive language, they face slurs on a daily basis. So it's not unusual. Um, so just because it's high profile, people are hearing about it more. And most people just get on with it because they don't know what to do. Um, and it's just become part of, of their life. Yeah, Yemi, as a black woman, have you been subjected to similar abuse? I certainly have, Claire. Um, my children have. I have four kids. Um, I'll just give you uh, perhaps an example that many people might be able to relate with. When I ran in the local elections in 2019, at the doors, I remember particularly one man asking me if I thought I was intelligent enough to run. And every time I spoke, he kept pretending like he didn't understand what I was saying. Um, my son, who is now 13, came home one day when he was in primary school, and he said to me that some, some of the kids around the area where we lived at the time had asked him permission to use the N-word for him. Now, these are kids. Nobody's born racist. We learn to be racist. And if we can learn to be racist, we can learn to be anti-racist. So we have a lot of work to do in that regard. One thing is clear. Ireland is a multicultural nation now. And a lot of migrants who are here are here to live, to build their lives, to contribute to the economy. I have four children. I have two grandchildren. I'm first generation migrant. My children are second generation migrants. My two grandsons are third generation migrants. I'm concerned about them. And what we need to begin to do is to have conversations about how we can live together, how we can understand, understand ourselves better, learn more about ourselves, and create a platform mm. where we can have difficult conversations and not run away from conversations that we're afraid of. There's a lot of fear fear of the unknown, because people sometimes would say they don't understand some other people from other cultures. Let's just have conversations. It sounds like what you're, what you're saying is, Yemi, is it's an education issue. Absolutely. Education is a big part of what we're talking about. I know that uh, there's a lot of work ongoing on the hate crime legislation. Um, uh, there was a, a, a call, I think, some late la year before the last for consultation. So major stakeholders got involved in that. The Minister for Justice, Helen McEntee, mm -hmm. has uh, uh, developed a draft hate crime legislation legislation that's great and that will address a number of things however you cannot legislate your way into a person's heart mm -hmm. this is where education is key where we need to give people a reorientation and a better understanding yeah. of the society we'll now live in it's a really good point Yemi's making Louise that um, these conversations aren't being had necessarily people are frightened to go there and to call it out when they see it taking place on the street and 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 for the victims for people who are you know feeling this and, and hearing this every day they feel they've they've nowhere to go with this but to get on with their lives yeah i think that we do we do need to start having those and we want to call them uncomfortable conversations well then let's have them um you know and and uh, that's a good point that you made you know racism we're not born racist you know, people learn it, right? And if you can learn to be racist, you can learn to be not just not be racist, we must be anti-racist. We must be active. So when we see it, we must call it out. So if we see it on the street, we must call it out and challenge all forms. So, you know, racism against people of colour, against members of the travelling community, we can't, there are words that we should not use, right? They might be words that I used when I was younger or you used when you were younger and maybe we could use the excuse that maybe 20, 30 years ago, yes, that, that, that we didn't realise how offensive those words are now. We know how offensive some of the language is and we need to not just police ourselves, but 
we need to be active. So when the, when the racist joke is said, we need to be the ones that say, that is not funny and it's not funny for a whole range of reasons. So allyship is about more than just saying, I am not a racist and I'm just going to put myself back in here. It's about being proactive, being mm -hmm. anti-racist and being vocal about it. And that gives, in my experience, that gives people a real confidence to be able to have the conversation. If you lead the conversation, other people will join because I have a great belief that people do not want to discriminate. They do not want to be racist. And if we need to go to meet people where they are to help with language, to help with a, a space to have those conversations, well, then let's do it. But we have to talk about it and we have to be free to have discussions about it. And we have to acknowledge that there might be people who need to learn. So let's help them. But let's do it. Not just as saying, I'm not a racist. Tick that box, go away. It's about being anti-racist.